Thank you for tuning in to the Macroview Television, and welcome to a brand new edition of the Taiwan Outlook. I'm your host Wu Reiguo. On today's program, we're delighted and honored to have a special guest who wears many hats. He's a well-known and highly respected attorney in Taiwan. He's also currently the president of Apple Foundation, and also the chairman and CEO of FICO's international company. He is Mr. Paul Xu, and welcome to the program, Paul. Thank you very much. Yes, well, Paul, like you said in your book, "Soft Power in Taiwan," you know, this is an area certainly a lot of people are paying close attention to today. And why do you think the soft power is the future? Holds the future key to Taiwan's continued development? Right, that's a question, of course. Uh, 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 that I put a lot of effort and yeah, a lot uh, of thought into yeah, a lot of thought as well. Yes. Now uh, I think the important thing is uh, you look at Taiwan's uh, uh, economic miracle. Yes. During the past uh, thirty, forty years, mm -hmm. uh, you would be able to find out. You know, mm -hmm. Taiwan uh, was focused on. Uh, Manufacturing yes. industry, so we are known yes. uh, with uh, our capability of manufacturing. Exactly. But on the other hand, yes. uh, people neglected mm -hmm. that uh, the experience mm -hmm. that accumulated mm -hmm. by our manufacturing industry mm -hmm. could be a commodity. Yes. Yeah. yeah exactly. It, it, it could be, be a sellable. valuable asset. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, how to uh, set up an assembly line, mm -hmm. how to. Uh, 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 find the buyers mm -hmm. and uh, how to uh, find the uh, components mm -hmm. that goes into a product. Mm -hmm. Now, how to fit themselves into the global product supply chain. Mm -hmm. Now, these th these uh, experiences, mm -hmm. in in my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, they are sub power. Yes. Yeah. Of course. So, how can we turn that mm -hmm. uh, into a commercialized product? Okay. And uh, share with the uh, world, especially the uh, underdeveloped, or we call emerging market economies around the world. Yeah, right. Yes. Uh -huh. Now behind that, yes. there was another important uh, uh, soft power. That's entrepreneurship. Okay. Yeah. Good. Now Taiwan is well known mm -hmm. of the achievement of uh, the private sector. Yes. Okay. And uh, I, I would argue probably you know Taiwan's. Tremendous success is largely depending on private sector's entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. Of course, government help along yes. the way. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, when Taiwan begin its economic development, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much the government also thinking of a, a planned economy. Mm -hmm. But well, I a think very visible government, right? Hand. Right, <laughs> it, it, <the> visible <laughs> hands. So, so this is time to develop petrochemical industry. Exactly. This is time to develop. Uh, uh, IT industry, yes. mm -hmm. but uh, uh, I would say quickly launched into 1980s, mm -hmm. and then the private sector just just uh, come up, yes. and uh, they develop capability, of grabbing every business opportunity, mm -hmm. and also de develop sectors of business mm -hmm. that wasn't quite in the government's uh, economic planning. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so this uh, strong entrepreneurship yes. is. Definitely a soft power. Mm -hmm. okay. But uh, along the way, of yes. course, uh, uh -huh. the civil society of course. concept, you know, mm -hmm. the corporate responsibility, yes. uh, the corporate governance that we have been emphasizing in recent years, yes. mm -hmm. also becomes soft power. Mm -hmm. And the management capability uh, in managing the business, how to mm -hmm. turn the business into a profitable one. Exactly. You know, how to mm -hmm. retreat when the business is not profitable. Mm -hmm. How do you All these react? Yes. considerations yes. Uh, are valuable experience, mm -hmm. and I would also turn as a soft power. Okay, yeah. good. We know the term soft power was first coined by the Harvard professor Joseph Dr. Knight. Yeah, Joseph yes. Knight. Yeah. But of course, he was referring to the American soft that's power. Right, that's right. And you are one of the leading experts, one of the early experts mm -hmm. that have developed a consistent, you know, uh, thinking mm -hmm. and perception about the soft power yeah. in Taiwan. Yeah. What would you then, in your view, mm -hmm. identify as the elements that constitute Taiwan's soft power? 
in addition to the experiences that you mentioned earlier? You know, what constitutes is, uh, as I said earlier, is yes. an entrepreneurial spirit. Yes. You know, that's the probably the, uh, you know, one, one of the major ones. Most important one. Yes. And uh, the entrepreneurial spirit, mm -hmm. if it plays in the right direction, such as innovation, yes. come up with new ideas, come with a new business uh, model, yes. mm -hmm. come, with a, come up with a new income model, mm, yes. and also exploring into the uh, market that other people probably would not go, mm -hmm. uh, go to. Yes. Uh, for instance, uh, I think in the 1970s, we mm -hmm. were talking about Taiwan businessmen uh, carrying a 007 su <laughs> suitcase, uh, suitcase yes. and traveling around the world. Exactly. And, uh, trying knocking to, on doors. Uh, knocking on doors, <laughs> trying to get uh, uh, a contract uh, order. Uh, yeah. A purchase order. Yeah. And then another time, uh, the buyers around the world will come to Taiwan uh -huh. and uh, a meeting with the Taiwan manufacturers. Exactly. Uh, this is a model, it's an earlier model. Mm -hmm. yeah. But later on, mm -hmm. uh, Taiwan industry think this is not enough. No. Then we want to uh, tap into the uh, global product supply chain. Mm -hmm. So when uh, uh, Reebok or Nike, mm -hmm. uh, they develop their own business model, like mm -hmm. they want to outsource all the manufacturing to other people so they can focus on their uh, uh, brand name development and uh, distribution system development. Precisely. So the Taiwan mm -hmm. entrepreneur grab that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now, interesting things, at the early stage, the uh, uh, Japanese company also mm -hmm. grabbed that opportunity. Yes. But pretty soon they launched into their own brand name development mm -hmm. and their Around own the distribution globe, yeah. system. So mm -hmm. Taiwan industry took over. A well, Korean mm -hmm. pay a role too, but they yes. pretty much later on followed the Japanese model. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have that model mm -hmm. uh, for many years and made a lot of people prosperous. Okay. okay? and providing a lot of uh, 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 job opportunity and so forth. Yes. But I think it, this is time yes. for us to also think about brand name yes. and our own distribution system. Mm -hmm. okay? With the connection between Taiwan and the uh, China market, mm -hmm. and, uh, I think we stand a very good opportunity yes. to launch into the next stage of uh, uh, yeah. business model and the economic development. Yeah. Well, your answer goes into, right into the question that I'm going to raise next, right. which is, we look at the world today. Mm -hmm. This is very different right. from the world it was back in the right. 70s and you know, even 60s. And the fact is that we have a very strong and powerful and also mm -hmm. risen mm -hmm. you know, neighbor next door. Mm -hmm. And with the improvement of cross-strait economic ties, that we're looking at a completely different set of external circumstances. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do believe mm -hmm. the soft power mm -hmm. is a very powerful concept. Mm -hmm. What would you then, you know, Paul, recommend in terms of pushing it right. to the next level? Right. Uh, of course, uh, our neighbors yes. uh, uh, certainly include the uh, vast China market. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, I would strongly argue that we don't forget uh, the Indian market mm, and other, other yes. uh, emerging market nations in Southeast Asia as well. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what we do need to think about is uh, how to tap into the future opportunity in those economies. Okay. Now, in the bigger scale economies such as China and India, mm -hmm. I think there's a strong urge to develop their domestic market. Yes. And Taiwan is small, Very but small. we have capability. Mm -hmm. So we should tap into the uh, domestic market of China and India. Mm -hmm. And okay. we could also teach other smaller economy, as well as a bigger economy, mm -hmm. in the category of uh, uh, emerging market, mm -hmm. uh, to teach them how to uh, do manufacturing. Yes. So based on our accumulated experience mm -hmm. in manufacturing, I think we, we should develop a new model for our industry mm. uh, that is how to provide total solution yes, to those markets. Yes. Instead of selling a, a product with mm. a low profit, mm -hmm. we should sell the whole total solution. Yeah, with higher uh, value yeah, added. Such yes. as a turkey yeah. project. Yeah, and exactly. So uh, our mindset needs to be changed Mm -hmm. from uh, uh, keep on manufacturing and keep on thinking about cost down mm -hmm. and shift to a new concept 
that uh -huh. is uh, providing high value added mm -hmm. solution. Yes. So that's a very powerful and fundamental switch. Right. And along the way, of course, the past experience yes. should be converted into intellectual property. <laughs> yes. So we should get intellectual property protection. Yes. And, uh, and how to use those uh, yeah. intellectual property. Yeah. How to manage those intellectual property. Yeah. And then make our soft power bigger. Yes. Before we conclude with this first segment, Paul, you mentioned in the book mm -hmm. there are five industries that you see in Taiwan right. as with the most potential right. you know, in terms of developing soft power. Right. What are they and why? Well, I would say you have to tap into the, the market development. Okay? okay, good. I think the IT industry is somewhat overcrowded. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, you, know, you can find some niche in the IT industry. Exactly. So I would argue the first will be uh, green technology, yes. which also requires a lot of IT uh, technology. Right? Precisely. Now, uh, green technology, I think we do have very good scientists. Okay. We could develop some good research mm -hmm. uh, program. Yes. But our weakness is how to convert it into a, a profitable business model. Exactly. And also, uh, a business model can launch into the international market. Okay. The second cate category is uh, uh, healthcare. Yes. Now, yes, healthcare, indeed. I would yes. divide into two area. One okay. is how to develop pharmaceutical, okay. how to develop uh, 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 medical equipment, Yes. and the other is uh, how medical to care. develop a health care system. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. We have tremendous power mm -hmm. and capability in the health care area, but unfortunately, uh, don't market the policy is not yes. right. Oh, okay. So I, I being suggest, suggesting okay. the government to allow the private sector who wants to get into the healthcare uh, in, industry, such as investing in a hospital, yes, uh, they should think about uh, more incentives. Let them, them. Yes. Uh, form a co cooperation. You know, yes. we have a very Whatever. backward law right yes. now yeah. that uh, if you, you invest, uh, you, if private sector set up a hospital, yeah. it has to be a a non profit uh, organization. Yes, the so mentality I think that's has wrong. to change. I think and before you get into <laughs> the third category, <laughs> we're going to take a short break on sure. the Taiwan Outlook. Or we'll be right back with Mr. Paul Xu, and we're going to continue talking about Taiwan's soft power. I'll see you in three minutes.